I'm going to try the Complete Salon Acrylic Kit by KISS. I'm going to put it on this hand. Let's go through that together step by step to create these. And at the end of this video, I'll review how these nails held up after three weeks. We should have everything in here we need. Let's get started. Now, I know you can get this on Amazon. I happened to pick this up inside the store before everything was shut down. So I thought we would walk that through together. I did do a kit about four years ago by KISS, but it wasn't as complete as this one. Many of you have asked if I would do a more complete one. So here we go. And we'll just, okay. So we have forms, nice little forms. We have a nice little buff block. Oh, and they give you a little container for the monomer. That's great. And here's the bottle of monomer. And here's some glue for those tips. This one I don't know what is. This is Apple Fresh Acrylic Masking Liquid. So that's probably to mask the smell of the acrylic in that bottle. And here's a rather large bottle of primer. You wouldn't need something this big, especially for just the few applications that this will get us, but there it is. And a little jar of acrylic. And then underneath this tray, oh, you just open up the other side. And be careful when you do, because it looks like the tips will all fall out if you don't open it up properly. Mm -hmm. It might be taped. Sometimes they're taped. I don't see any tape. Ooh! So the corners are yeah. snapped up. Maybe I'm opening it wrong. Oh, okay. Wait a sec. It looks like a separate tray. Oh, wait. Yeah. Look. Oh! They actually do it this way where you slide it. I wonder if there are instructions on how to do that. Well, the instructions the are inside there. I couldn't get them until I brought out the tray. Okay, and inside that one, we get the file. This is more the prepping file. This is actually the buffing file to smooth it before you put nail polish on. And then you get a brush. This is where I find the hugest lack of quality is, is usually the brush. But that was just the other kit. Maybe we'll get a little more wear out of this one. Well, this one looks bigger, longer than the Yeah, it's a one. little bit, I think, but yeah. not much. But it's still the oval, and I like that shape. But they have nice instructions, and we will look at those instructions. Okay. And I will keep this just in case there's something on here that I need to know. So we'll put that off to the side. Okay, so let's prep the nail first. We'll just put these, we'll, we'll open up the instructions and we will follow it to make sure that we are doing it right. So they give you the option to do the tips or to do the forms. And I am sort of torn what we will do, but let's just prep the nails first. Okay, so I did remove all my acrylic the other day and I put some nice polish on, but these are my natural nails actually. After 33 years of wearing acrylic on my hands, look how beautiful they are when you remove the product properly. These are all my natural nails and they look really great. So we're gonna remove the polish that's on there. And it's just nail polish. Usually I wear gel polish, but this happens to be nail polish. I love nail polish. So I'm just gonna quickly remove that because when you get the kit, that's what you wanna do. You wanna prep your nails for the acrylic that you're about to put on. So I'm just going to clean off all of the nail polish that's on here. That's the advantage of wearing gel on my other hand is that the nail polish remover will not take that off. Because sometimes if you have nail polish on, if you're removing it and touching the nail polish, it can remove the hand that you have the polish on. But this hand won't get affected because it's actually gel polish. And you do want to make sure that you get all of that off because it will make a difference in your adhesion. If you leave any of it on and you don't buff it off, if there's any left on there, the product, no matter what you put on, will not stick on there. Okay, let me just get rid of that. So once you've removed all of that, you've removed all the oils pretty much too. There can be oils in a nail polish remover, depending on which brand that you're using, but we're now going to buff everything up. So I'm gonna use the um, file that they've given me in the kit and you know, let's, let's look at the directions to make absolute sure, because if there's any lifting or any problems, you may have used the wrong file. You don't want to use something like this because it is rather smooth, unless they tell me to. So let's just read it and see what they say. So it says, please read carefully before starting. And I do really feel that if you're having a product that's not working right, it's probably because we're doing something a little bit wrong. So do follow the instructions. Okay, please push back the cuticle and we do have 
Yep, we have the cuticle stick to do that. Pushing back with the cuticle stick and then gently roughen the entire nail surface using the fine side of the file. This will ensure maximum adhesion and strength. Okay, so there's something right away that I'm not sure I 100% agree with. I would use the rougher side of the file to prep the natural nail, especially if any issues with lifting. But let's use the finer side. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes when you use too fine a file, it doesn't buff the surface up enough. However, products have come a long way and they do have great adhesion and maybe it's enough. So I'm going to do what they say. And in this case, I'm feeling it. I would save the rougher side for the sculpting part of it, which is important. But the finer side is this one. So I'm going to use that. And I'm just going to gently buff up. Even if you use the rougher side, just still use it very gently. And this is a little awkward. I'm sorry. I'm doing this on my opposite hand. <laughs> it's not, you know, quite as comfortable for me as doing it on the other hand. Okay, so I'm going to move the instructions out of my way so it's just easier to see everything. And I'm going to buff up all these guys. Now, I do want to explain. See this kind of purple bruise I have on my finger? See that purple bruise? Yeah, I see that. That is a purple bruise. That's from holding my drill year after year, a day after day. Um, and I kind of grip onto it hard. So I've actually literally bruised that. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because I don't want that to have any reflection as it being the product and being an error on the product's part. That's completely my natural nail, just so you know that. Okay, so I'm just going to buff these guys up. I'll just give it a good buff. Now, just make sure that you do get into every little corner. If you see a little shiny spot, take your little duster. This was not supplied in the kit. This is just one that I had. I just knew that I would need it. See, you can see that? Can you see any shininess? I see some all along here. That will most likely lift. So it's imperative that you make sure that every, it's just a tiny little spot, right? Just a sliver, like the size of a couple of hairs. <laughs> so make sure you get every little bit of that shiny spot out. Okay, so I'm going to dust that off and show you exactly how each finger needs to be filed up. See that? No shiny spots. That nail is ready for the acrylic to be applied. I'll go ahead and do the other ones and then we can get started with the tips. Okay, so now we are going to size up a tip. Now you can do that before you buff these up, but I actually buff them up first. There's two options. We could use the forms if we wanted, but I'm going to assume that most of us that are at home don't have the skills to form it. It's a little bit, well, it's a lot a bit more technical and a lot more involved in doing nails, but this makes it a lot easier. So I'm just going to assume to do the easiest nail possible so you can get some nails on you right away. So what we have to do is size up the tips. And we do have the idea to use the natural or the French. Hmm. I don't know which one I will use. I'm going to do the Oh, I will mention too, if you have the natural nail under there, you don't have to keep it there. You can simply shorten your natural nail right off and you literally would just, you could clip them and you can also just file them and shorten them just like that. The reason why you might want to do that is because the natural nail might not fit completely under here like that. It might be kind of, if your natural nail looks like this and the tip, sometimes the natural nails aren't perfect and the tip is perfect, they might not go together that great. They might leave a bit of a gap. So shortening it might take care of that and eliminate that gap that you might be kind of not liking, okay? So it's totally up to you. It's neither here nor there. It doesn't really matter. Some people hate to have some natural nail underneath there like that. And some people it doesn't bother at all. I find that with all clients are very, very different. Okay, so let's see here if we put on, that's more of a natural look. Do you want the natural look? Well, the reason why I don't particularly like the French in these particular things is because after doing French for so many years of my career, I worked very hard on that smile line. And I find these smile lines never really complement too much the shape of my nail. So I generally don't like it because I like a real deep curvature look. But everybody's different. Some people like it more straight across. I just happen to like it really smiley, which they call it a smile line. So you have a choice of to put it over... I'm just showing you this one because it's more of the size that matches. Um, but I don't know if I really like the French so much. I think I'm just going to do the natural. And when you do a tip, when you're sizing a tip, do it you're a little bit on the bigger side than the smaller side because they tend to shrink a little bit. And what I mean by that is you want to make sure, see the sides here? See this tip, the see-through part? You want it to make sure that it attaches on this side all the way and you roll it over and it's going to fit on this side all the way. So when you lay it in there, you want it to have a nice 
curvature too. You don't want it to be your natural nail curving and then the tip to come straight out. So you want it to be a nice flow with your natural nail. So you kind of want to rest it in there and then look at it sideways and see if it has a nice flow. You don't want your natural nail to have a little bit of a bend and then it kind of bends and then goes straight up. Okay, so you want to have a natural kind of curve to it. Okay, well this one, let's do the index finger. We'll complete the index finger together, then I'll go ahead and do the rest of them. But I think that might not fit bad at all. That, okay, so let's give that a whirl. Okay, so back to the instructions. So yeah, you, this says right here, you can rough it up ahead of time and then fit your sizes. So go ahead and fit all the nail sizes that you need. And then you want to apply a small amount of the Kiss Maximum Speed Glue into the well area of the artificial tip and then press it into the natural nail. Hold firmly for five seconds. Make sure there's no visible air pockets in the bonding area. If so, remove it and start all over again, and then you can trim them to what you want. Okay, so where's the glue guy? This is this nice smelly stuff, and this is the glue, okay. Now glue, you do wanna make sure that when you use the glue, clean it off right away because it can glue itself together. So if you go to use this kit for a fill, or you wanna do a new set, or you broke a nail and you wanna replace it, it can be ruined because the glue is all sealed itself together. So just have a little thing that you can just remove right away, okay? So I am going to pour the glue, like they said, right into that little well tip. You don't want too much in there, but you gotta make sure you have enough. So when you press it down, it's gonna spread out a little bit. So I'm gonna, now this is the, you got to make sure you put this on the right spot because you really only get one shot to really do that. And you wanna press it down. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna let go, okay? That doesn't look too bad. Oh, I used I did have tip cutters at one point, but you can you can file it down. You can cut it with a pair of scissors too. That's long. Okay, that's what it says to do. I'm gonna clean off my glue. Remember, I said that should do what I said. Okay, now the instructions are. So you want to apply the nail primer to the natural nail surface only. Yeah, and if you hit it on the tip, it doesn't really matter. They're just saying you just apply it to the natural nail. Let it dry, and then we want to pour the acrylic into the Dappen dish and add three to five drops of the Kiss Apple Fresh Acrylic Masking Liquid. And if you've worked with acrylic before, we all know that acrylic can have an odor, a very strong odor. That's the fast setting stuff. So we are going to Oopsie, that came right off like that. We're gonna pour the acrylic liquid into the dish. And we're going to put three to five drops of the apple fresh. Oh, can you smell it, Cameraman? Here, just gonna give you, a, just take that carefully so you don't spill it everywhere. And take a little whiff. I really can't smell it that well. Ooh, you don't want Oh, I smell it now, yeah. It's just hit yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, I, I was close to, you know. Yeah, that's, that. you don't I, want to breathe it that I close. I inhaled it too close. You yeah, you probably did. Should have warned me you're going to knock me out. <laughs> like you didn't know <laughs> after doing videos for five years. Okay, three to five drops. I'm going to do the five. One, two, three, four, five. And I will say, it smells actually very apple fresh. It smells really nice. But you can see they don't put it in there they're putting it in after. I don't know chemically why that is, but clearly they gave you a separate bottle to put it in there after. They probably, maybe in shipping, it wouldn't last that long. Maybe it um, evaporates so you can't smell it anymore. But for whatever reason, you want to do it just before you use it. So, Karen, man, does that help you at all? Just take a little whiff of that. See if you can erase your mind. I should have some coffee beans. But just erase your mind of what you smelled. It's not, smell? it's not as powerful, but I'm also kind of used to it, so I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it still smells. Can you smell the apple fresh in there? No, I didn't notice anything. Oh, do you, maybe I'll give you the apple fresh to smell and see if you can detect that smell was even in there. Because that smells nice. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that smells like apples. That does smell really good, yeah, doesn't it? it so does. could you green smell apple. that in there? Um, yeah, green apple. I didn't notice that. No. Okay, fair enough. Okay. But you know what? They're trying. Okay, so I am now taking off the lid to the clear acrylic, it says. And the primer, 
Now there's no brush specifically and oh, there's a brush inside. It's attached to the little lid here. Now we've buffed the nail up, it's all ready to go. So I am going to put a little primer on. So before you put the primer on, buff the surface of the tip a little bit because if you put the acrylic over top of it, which I would recommend, you want the acrylic to stick to it. And also, I would have to say if this is clear, which I'm double checking, it is a clear powder, you're going to see that line more likely. So I would buff that line. That is the top of the tip that's stuck to your nail. Give that a bit of a buff so we don't see that line when we put the acrylic on, okay? They don't specifically say that, but that's a pro tip I'm just sharing with you that if you want it to look quite flawless across that nail plate, if you're not going to use any color, like a nail polish or anything, you don't want to really see the line. Even if you did have a color on there, you might see it if it's a transparent kind of color, like the color I had on. Sorry, it looks kind of awkward again. I'm using my opposite hand. The best way to do that sometimes is I am right-handed, so you can just hold the file in place and then you can move your finger, which is what you're more used to moving, okay? So just be careful when you're filing this, make sure you're not over filing your natural nail. Try to see if you're just hitting the tip itself, not so much your natural nail. Okay, I'm just gonna call that a day. I'm gonna dust it off and hope that that's enough to cover it, okay? So now I'm gonna get my primer, which I've already undone. Make sure you don't oversaturate it with any primer that you use, make sure you use it very sparingly. You don't want to oversaturate that natural nail bed. So I am just going to apply the primer now on the natural nail plate and not oversaturating it at all. Okay. But make sure that you do hit the tip because that little line, it might help disintegrate it a tiny little bit, might melt it a little bit so that when you do apply the acrylic, you won't see that line so much. Okay. Now we get to apply the acrylic. Here we get that little brush. Here we go. I'm gonna get this little piece of cotton swab to absorb any extras that I don't want on the nail. Okay, so now I'm going to apply the acrylic bead. Now this in itself, I know it, you know, it seems easy. You get the liquid, get the powder, get a bead on there, kind of press it around and shape a nail. But that in itself takes a lot of skill. So just don't worry, just take small beads and just this is the practice part and you can practice on a fake finger i would highly recommend that honestly before you start doing your own nails but i got a lot of videos in a very professional sense to be able to walk you through this particular part so it says dip acrylic brush into the acrylic liquid mixture and stir slightly that's just getting it all wet wipe it onto the paper towel brush is now prepared for application so now we're going to go in get the monomer and we're going to collect a bead and we're going to shape it onto the nail so i'm going to recommend that you just get a small bead when you're first trying this Ooh, absorbed quite a bit that's too big i'm going to get a smaller bead never know how a new brush is going to absorb so maybe just try a few first That's a bit better of a size. It's still a bit big, I think. Clean off your brush and then flatten that a little acrylic. Flatten as much as you can. This is a faster setting. It's not a slower setting. It's not an odorless. So you really have about 40, 30 to 40 seconds to start getting it into place. And it's starting to actually shape up now. You don't have long before it comes to the point where you cannot move it anymore. And the cuticle will be the most crucial area you need to worry about. So I'm gonna get another little bead. I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit closer. Ooh, this brush is extremely absorbent. So it really absorbs a lot of monomer. So getting a big bead is actually really easy to do with this. So I'd be very careful about that. And just for anybody that's just doing new acrylic, never done it before, don't add more monomer to try to soften that bead. It's very bad for the curing process for the bead. So I'm gonna get a really small bead. I need a little small bead in here. Remember that's the structure of the um, stress point. So I'm gonna get, and because this stuff really absorbs 
my goodness, I'm going to try to get the least amount of liquid as possible. I'll just show you that. I'm pressing on the side of the dish to release. And then I'm going to place in the powder. Wow, that just got such a big bead. And I'm going to place it right on the side there. This stuff does really cure up fast. So I don't have long, I would say about 20 seconds before it starts to really harden up on you. So you really got to move quickly. But I just wanted to get it in that stress point to make sure that it doesn't break. It's also my right hand. And right hands, if you're right-handed, or your more dominant hand is more busy, and it needs more strength because you're going to most likely break it. So I'm going to put some more, in, just a giant bead. I didn't really want that big. And I'm going to wipe some of it off because it's really just too big. Okay, it's actually looking pretty good. Okay, so the other side, you can see there's a little gap missing there. So I am going to get really quite a tiny bead in there. And I'm just going to see if I can place it in there. Put your bead close to it and then press your bead to try to fit into the area that you want. Try to squish it in there without touching the skin and then feather it away is the best way to do it. Now, one other area you have to worry about is the apex, and that is the structure. Now, if I'll just hold this for you, cameraman. So the structure is what you're looking for is you need to have a nice structure in here. You can compare it to this finger that I have. See the structure that I have in there? You need to have that in here. And we do need to bring the acrylic bead over top of the plastic as far down as you want that nail to go because you're going to need that strength. So let's add that bead now. So I'm going to place that bead right there, clean off my brush, and I'm going to flatten that down. Now this is where you're going to get lumpy and bumpy, but don't worry about it. You can file that all off. Don't worry about that at all. So I'm going to turn it sideways now. So you can see that I added that nice apex. That's good. I'm going to make these on the shorter side. I'm not going to go really long with these. I'm going to cut it off to about here. So you can see that there's a nice amount of acrylic right to the end. So I stopped cameras for a second so I could grab my tip cutter. Now the tip cutter did not come included in this. Um, so you could cut them with scissors before you put them on. If you do not have one, you've already glued them on. You can cut them with scissors, but cut them on one side, maybe one side, but you can flatten them across. If they crack down this way at all, that means that it did affect it, but I've had it before where it didn't, so you're okay. But stick it in the tip cutter. And this is where you, if you don't put too much acrylic down, because acrylic will be a little bit harder to cut. But the tips actually cut quite easily and you just give it a little slice. You can see how easy it, it um, snaps off. Okay, so let me just put these aside and we'll finish this nail up and I will finish all of them for the photo. Just make sure your brush is clean. What you wanna do is dip it into your monomer and then just wipe it on a clean piece of towel and make sure that there's no acrylic or powder stuck in there because it will harden and you don't want to do that. This brush so far is holding up. We've just done one nail, but so far it's a little fluffy and it's a little, you know, misshapen, but I was able to do it. Okay, so now we want to, I'll follow the instructions, even though I know we're supposed to just file. It does instruct you to how to clean the brush, which is really good. File the entire nail surface using the Kiss Two-Way Nail File to even the overlay surface. Now they don't really indicate which file, this might have been the one they meant you to prep it, but they didn't really indicate that. So I am going to use the rougher side of the black file that comes in the kit to actually shape it because that feels like the grittiest to me. This is kind of gritty, but it's not gritty enough, I don't think. And it's also spongy, so you can't really shape it. You need something with some strength to it so you can actually shape it the way you want. So I am going to file this. And again, because this is my non-dominant hand, I'm going to hold the file in place and I'm going to move my finger the way I know it needs to be moved. 
find that really effective when you're doing your opposite hands. So there's a lot, you know, filing techniques, but just file around as smoothly as you possible can, but just be careful you're not cutting your cuticle. And the reason why you might want to cut that cuticle is because you might have gotten the acrylic that kind of flowed or too close to the cuticle area and you're trying to get at it with that file. And be really careful you don't cut your skin. Okay, and in this instructions in particular, it says use the Kiss white buff block to smooth and finish and then polish and go. So in this case, it's actually pink and that's fine. You just use it and that's usually a sponging and that's why I know it's a finishing block because it's spongy and you cannot shape and sculpt nails with a spongy block. So this one will be definitely used as to smoothing and finishing just before you polish. That's what this one is meant to do. Okay, now because there's no oil in the kit, double checking, nope, I would oil this up before you polished and go. Or if you're going to gel polish, you just want to remove the dust at this point and you could polish this nail just as it is with the rough finish. Okay, so I'm gonna just dust it off a little bit. Okay, so then I would get some nail polish and I could go. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and finish all of them before I do polish them and we'll get some final shots. One thing that I did learn when I was pressing on the tips is when I press it down, these tips are a little bit more curved than my natural nail maybe is. So I have to really, really press hard. This one I had to hold about 10 seconds. I was pressing hard into it and I still couldn't remove the bubbles because one of them is too curvy and I would imagine it's the tip is just so curvy, it wouldn't flatten down enough to grasp onto it enough, even though I held it for about 10, 12 seconds. So there are some little bubbles in there. I mean, the nail looks good when it's done, but there are some bubbles in there. Okay. So you might not have oil in the kit, that's one thing it didn't have, but you might have some oil kicking around. You can even grab some olive oil or something. And I'm just going to saturate each nail and see how these look with all the dust taken off, with all the sort of natural oils is what you're trying to simulate when you put oil back on. And let's see what we got here. Surprisingly, the brush held out for the whole application. That's just one hand, of course. I imagine it would probably make it through the whole application but just make sure you clean the brush really good so that when you go for the fill, which is why I did this on my opposite hand too, is because I wanna keep this hand with this product on it so that in two or three weeks time, I can show you what they look like and we can do a fill on it in case you're using this product. That's why I didn't do this hand because this is the hand I usually use when I'm doing regular videos constantly. Okay, so I'm massaging that oil in and let's get a look and see. And this is probably why I'm gonna to wanna to wear a nice soft pink coat of color over top. So when you examine it, you can see the line of this tip. I just couldn't seem to blend it good enough. I kept filing and filing and for fear of filing my natural nail, I just kind of let it go. But this one I blended out pretty good. And that one, this one's not bad either. Neither is this one. Let's examine this thumb. With the thumb, you can see the trouble I had with the air bubble then. Like I say, I held it down for about 12 seconds and it just wouldn't seal good enough or hold it good enough in that spot. I think it was the form is the tip itself. It's just a little too curvy for my nail. Also too, when I'm filing and shaping, I didn't leave them quite square. You can see the difference in how square they are. I tapered the shape of it a little bit just to bring it in, just, just as my own aesthetic. That's just what I like. I don't like a very wide nail at all. Okay, so actually they held up pretty good. So let's take some photos. I want to show you what they look like before I put some nice polish on it. So check out the photos. Here's a picture before polish. With nail polish, it covers any flaw. Okay, so you just watched the application. This is three weeks later as an update of how it held up. Now for a regular standard fill, it actually did okay. This is my right hand. 
I do everything with this hand. I'm right-handed. But it also has wear and tear. So there's normal wear and tear, and there's a little extra because they weren't custom designed as I normally do with sculpting on a form. And here's the difference. If I flip over, I don't know, cameraman, if you can get a good close-up of This is the gross part, and this is the reality of a fill and what it looks like when it comes back to you two and three weeks later. Like I say, the good things are, it's they're still here. They're on. Now, some of them are coming off in some areas. Now, we'll say natural nails curl underneath. They kind of, when they're sitting Here's your natural nail. Here's the acrylic on top. As they grow out two or three weeks later, the natural nail can curl a little. So it feels like the natural nail is pulling, or the acrylic is pulling away from the natural nail, but it's actually the other way around. The natural nail is pulling away from the acrylic. So if we just look here, you can see this one in particular. This is normal wear and tear basically for a set that, you know, grows out three, five, and four weeks. Okay, three, four, and five weeks. So you can see, see those little gross dirt patches there. Now I've cleaned my nails. I just actually scrubbed them before I did this, but the dirt gets settled between the natural nail and the acrylic. Now you can see the dirt on that side and that side, and which showing the natural nail is curling. Now this was a tip. So tips don't fit as snug as when you're doing a form. Also the natural nail, as it grows underneath, as it starts to pull away, dirt can get caught up inside there. So this, um, I'm just doing this water ink here, this uh, marble ink, and I'm just going to see if it'll actually, yeah, you see that? You can see exactly where the natural nail is getting kind of old, it's drying out, and it's kind of grabbing onto any bit of dirt. Natural nails have a weave, so it will catch onto the dirt. Now, this one here, you can see this is all lifted on this side. I'm going to put a little bit of, what? see, look at that. Wow. I don't know if you can see that, but it just, the water, the ink, I keep saying water marble, the ink, see how it goes all inside there? I'm gonna get a pad here and remove the nail polish. Good thing I put nail polish on there, it's just easy to take off. Now when you take the nail polish off, you can see the wear and tear of a set. So I have to say, as an update, I mean, this is gonna make a great fail and I'm actually really glad that we're releasing this video now and we were waiting for the grow so I could do the update on the end of this video because I really wanna fill these nails. <laughs> I'm just dying to fill them because I'm getting my hair caught in the pinky in particular that is starting to lift. As a nail grows out, wear and tear happens and that's why they need a fill. So these are three weeks old. They're starting to flip up this way. Like I say, it's a busy hand. Also, I've noticed with a tip, and this particular type of acrylic that I use from the cassette, it's softer, so they're being worn down. So we're losing the shape that I originally started with very quickly. Now, also, I want to show you, I'm going to do a video more extensive about this, but I'm catching my hair in it like crazy. And to show you, I'm just going to show you how I can slip the dental floss. It's simulating my hair underneath. That's how much is starting to lift on that particular finger. But if you note, this finger is not. Now I will say, I'm an experienced nail tick of 30 years, but you can still see how doing the opposite hand isn't as good as when I'm doing this hand, but I'm still going to experience a little bit because the product isn't as good quality as a really good quality product. But got to be honest, after three weeks, it actually held out not too bad at all. Okay, oh, and look at this one. Now you can see here on the thumb that the glue wasn't quite tight down on this side, and so it's starting to lift, but I have to say it's still hanging in there. Now you can see the thumb in particular. I'm gonna put some ink in there and you'll really see the lift on the thumb. See the dark patch there? That's where the natural nail is really come up. So you can see how the natural nail is starting to just grow away, it's starting to naturally curl, so it's pulling away from the tip but that's another video too. But this is a standard wear and tear, a little more than normal, but it's a standard wear and tear of what you'd expect just before you do a fill. And that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna fill these. Catch you guys in the next one. Okay.